I had to fake the Black Adam logo animation to meet the deadline. And luckily, the film studio couldn't distinguish it from the original. So you're supposed to create a top-notch piece of motion design, but you're given just two days. In these situations, there is sometimes no other way than to use faking techniques to speed things up. But should you feel guilty, even when big Hollywood studios don't notice the difference anyway, this is the logo of a fictional TV station almost identical to the actual one I was working on. To promote the Black Adam movie, they imagined the TV ident to blend smoothly into the official logo animation. Like this, which resembles the client's storyboard made in a Word document. Of what I thought they expected me to animate it like high-end studio openers seamlessly transforming into the film's atmosphere. Of course, in almost no time. And no original 3D source files, because there was simply no time to ask for them through the official channels. But at least I got the studio's official still image of the logo with very high resolution and the original video file of the logo animation. To be honest, I could have also grabbed them from the internet if necessary to save time. Anyways, these are the conditions where small and average freelancers like me have to deal with every day. But if you're confident enough of using some tricks and shortcuts, this can definitely help you out of time pressures, especially when a big Hollywood studio, like in my case, had to approve the result. But it's also a risky way. I started with the reshape effect, which I thought would keep me from heavy 3D rendering. I needed a destination mask and a source mask, making sure that both of them had the same number of points for a proper morph. I animated the effect and what seemed plausible in my theory turned out to look, I would say, subpar. Well, technically I fulfilled my job according to the storyboard, but a 90s look wasn't that demanded. I tried hard to make it look good, but it just didn't get any better, not even with a lens flare. So I lost an hour or two, believing that staying in After Effects would save me a lot of time. But before I moved on, I needed to know what font was used. I got two results. Looking into the official font asset datasheet wasn't only interesting to learn who actually created the original logo animation, I also got the answer I needed. I opened Cinema 4D and with a reference in the background, I matched the camera angle by eye, reconstructed the flash-shaped A letter and added some depth. I faked the 3D material by projecting the background reference onto the logo, which saved me from adding the detailed bevels, setting the lights and reflections. Because the texture slipped when I moved the camera, I had to apply the camera mapping technique, making the texture stick to the 3D model during camera animation. For the most flexibility, I also baked the texture, allowing me to transform the logo itself, but not too much to reveal the fake. Next, I imported the TV station's logo and added some vertices in the letter A to make sure that it had the same number of points as the Black Adam A. It was for, you guessed it already, a proper morph. Then I extruded the logo and switched to Photoshop, where I clone stamped the high-res image to extract a texture for a 3D material that I applied to the TV logo. This made it look like it was part of the Black Adam environment. I wanted to impress with an obvious idea that included all letters to morph, but it turned out to be a bit too playful. I came to the conclusion that a simpler approach would keep the gravitas of the Black Adam logo. Anyways, my overeagerness cost me another one or two hours. Because I used fake 3D materials, the animation rendered in a blink of an eye. One sequence for the morph and another one for the Black Adam logo. In After Effects, I blended them together with a gradient wipe. For the glowing backgrounds, I clone stamped a still from the original animation in Photoshop before I simply animated a turbulent displace effect on it to fake some smoke and heat distortion movements, as I didn't want to waste time looking for proper smoke stock footage. It also could have been easy to recreate the glowing flash stroke, but I thought that you can never beat the original glow. So far, my version looked very close to the original. But because the camera animation differed significantly from the original, the glow didn't match with my 3D sequence. So I used Mocha AE in combination with CC Power Pin to have the glow stay in position and size. With the stabilized footage, I could comfortably isolate the glow animation with all its details. I turned the glow layer into a 3D layer and positioned it correctly in 3D space to make it match with my 3D rendering. 
looked good, even in comparison with the original. But I felt that the shape morph looked unmotivated. I needed a credible reason to ignite the morph. I got it after I spotted Black Adam's glowing symbol on his chest. I already prepared a glowing material in Cinema 4D when... Dad, I wanna go swim! So, I was about to animate the glow when... Dad, I'm hungry. Buy me food. Shortly before I set up the rendering, I... Dad, I'm bored! So, after some unforeseen events, I scrapped the idea to create the glow in Cinema 4D. Because of time pressure, I faked the glow by simply inverting the rendering, applying an image wipe, tinting it orange, and adding my Super Glow preset to it. And the final result looked like this. Of course, this was just a simplified version of what was really going on in these two days, and I didn't even include the time waiting for feedback or implementing the change requests, although they were just minor luckily, but still, even small change requests can add up to something catastrophic. And this is why you shouldn't feel guilty to fake things but usually eat up a lot of time, like heavy 3D renderings. If you're on time pressure and your client is aware of that, then I think it is absolutely legitimate to use alternative techniques. But of course, as long as you meet a minimum standard of visual quality. For me, faking techniques are shortcuts that contribute to your smart workflow. So use them whenever and wherever you can. See you next time. Yeah, when can we go swimming with besties?